Good morning. Um, take whatever device you have, either by written, printed, or electronic form, and yes, turn to Luke chapter 21, verse 34 through 36. And that's where we're going to start today. And um, <clears throat> yeah, let me just start with reading, reading the passage to you. Jesus, speaking to his disciples, says, Be on your guard so that your hearts are not weighted down with dissipation, drunkenness, or the worries of this life. And that, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live in the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place to stand before the Son of Man. I remember having a discussion with a friend, co-worker, um, uh, oh, several years ago, and um, she was working um, on becoming a medical doctor. She had uh, worked as a tech as well as a unit clerk within the emergency room at the university thing. And uh, <clears throat> so we were just, you know, kind of just sitting around at some gathering, not um, not immediately related to being on duty, but certainly I think one of our other coworkers was leaving or something, I forget. But anyway, we were sitting around chatting and um, she was talking about not sure what she was going to do. Um, certainly she, uh, um, she was, uh, <clears throat> man, she was just a, a brain, if you will, um, to the effect of, and I'm not here to rat her out, but <clears throat> to the effect that when you go to doctor school, you have to take an MCAT, which is like a test to weed out people to like, you know, whether or not you get into doctor school. Um, she didn't have to take that. She was already so smart, kind of a deal. Like she had taken all the classes, scored high enough, like, you know, huge. Yeah, um, that kind of person. And so um, when she went through the process, got, got into med school, was getting out, getting ready to figure out what she was going to do finished up her residency stuff. And she's like, I'm just not sure what I want to do. And I'm like, well, what do you like to do? And she's like, well, I'm really torn with, because I really like the research, which really fit what she, what she liked versus, um, you know, but I really like, you know, the, the path that I kind of had to focus on, which was pediatrics. And I said, well, you know, you can always do research, you know, um, that kind of a thing. And, um, and she's like, yeah, and kind of back and forth. And we were just kind of chatting, you know, and just over a period of the conversation. And finally, I just said, well, good grief. What do you really just love to do? I mean, if you were to, if you were to go, you know, finish your absolute medical career at this point in time, when it was all said and done, you know, what would you rather say you did? You know, you, you know, hang out with a bunch of kids and made them well, or, or, or work on some research kind of things, which certainly can have its you know, impact indirectly. And, and um, finally, she just says, you know, I like the research, but man, I just like hanging with and, and seeing kids get better. And I said, well, I'll, and I'll tell you, well, with whatever you do, you know, whatever you choose to do, set your heart toward it and go be the best you can be at it, you know? And eventually she, she chose to go the, you know, to be a medical doctor on the pediatric side. And I think she's doing some research too here and there. I don't know. I haven't really followed up uh, with her much, but um, there comes a time where you need to make some decisions, you know, you got to make some decisions, you know, am I going to go left? Am I going to go right? And, and I get certain ones when you're just kind of like, what if I do this? Will I do that? You know, obviously some decisions are, are much more concerning. Like, you know, today, do we go do Italian food for lunch or do we go do Mexican? You know, and both bring both repercussions, if you understand my meaning. <clears throat> However, you know, there comes times when, you know, when you have to sit here and you just got to sit down, make a decision, press forward. And when you do those kinds of things, you come to a place then where it's already been done. Let me give you a bit of an example. And it's pretty relatively simple, but it comes down to just the fact of the matter of if you're going to work 
You know, if you're going to live, you're going to have to have a certain amount of things and obligations. Now, if you choose, for example, to live off the grid out in the middle of nowhere, like Grizzly Adams did, you still got to go hunt fish and do something to eat, or it's just not going to work out. Build a house, shelter, all those things that go with it. If you choose to live in an economy, in a society, you go work, you pay your mortgage, you pay your bills, turn electricity on, just those kinds of things. But you come to a decision of which direction you're going to do. And the bottom line is this. You still got to figure out how you're going to make that survival point. <clears throat> Jesus was talking to his disciples going back to um, Luke and the early parts of Luke and, and a little background information with this and i'm going somewhere with this i'm not just shotgunning this watch with me if you look at verse five some of the, as they were walking through and, and actually the story of the chronological portions of the timeline there and i didn't record this up here but um, if you remember the story when jesus watched the widow give the last portion that she had it was one of the greatest offerings <clears throat> That was at a point where they were at the temple. And as they were walking through the temple, some of the disciples were making a remark of how, how adorned the temple was with beautiful stones and, and different things that went along with that. That particular temple that Jesus was, when he was on earth, was built by Zerubbabel and Ezra, and then was ex greatly extended and improved by Herod and became the center of Jewish life. Um, for pretty much everything, you know, it was the social, um, social and economical portions. It, it the, their universe functioned around the temple and its worship portions that that went along with that. Herod's rebuilding and um, and his or rebuilding his Herod's uh, building portion started about 19 BC and completed around 63 AD, um, taking more than 80 years. And if you actually note that time, the building. Uh, uh, that building was still under construction even at the time of when Jesus was walking the planet. <clears throat> when you look at other writings that was going on at the time, the Jewish historian Josephus says that the temple was literally covered on the outside with gold plates, and they were so brilliant that when the sun shone on them, it was blinding even to look at. And there, when in the spots that there was no gold, there were blocks of marble that were so pure white that strangers from a distance thought there was snow on the temple. It was, as a matter of fact, when Jesus talks about in chapter 5 of the book of Matthew, as it's recorded there, um, when Jesus talks about that we are the light of the world like a city on the hill, that's the reference he was making toward it. That when the sun showed on, on that particular building between the gold and the white marble, not only was it just you know uh, something to look at, but almost a blinding opportunity to know where that center of the cultural was going to be, the cultural world was going to be. Just a couple of other pieces to, to put this in perspective. It is said that at the fall of Jerusalem, that the last surviving Jews of the city, when they fled, um, uh, fled the temple because it was the strongest. They, they, when they fled the temple, they had, had uh, gathered there because it was the strongest, most secure building in the city. The Roman soldiers surrounded it, and then they started a fire to start burning it, and then the ornate gold detail work on the roof melted down in between the rocks and the stones and the different things that went on with that. And the Roman commander at the time ordered that the temple be dismantled stone by stone, brick by brick in 70 AD um, so that that gold could be harvested so much so that when that it filled a, uh, the prophecy that you see this temple, there will not even be one stone left on it. Jesus continues to talk to them. That's in verse six that's recorded there. And they, of course, the disciples like, hey, when's this going to happen? You know, our universe is going to be destroyed. And this is where we're going with this. Jesus says, don't be deceived. For many will be calling in my name, claiming that I am the Messiah and that the time is near. <clears throat> Jesus continues to say, um, working with verse nine, you're going to hear wars, rumors of wars, revolutions, but don't be frightened. That's going to come, but it's not me. 
<clears throat> nation, verse 10 talks about nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Bad stuff will happen. Hey, there'll be great earthquakes, famines, pestilence, fearful events. Sounds like 2021. <laughs> if you think about it, right? Not that 2022 is getting off to a great start, you know, two weeks in. Verse 12, but before all of these things will even happen, and we've watched this, Jesus says this to his disciples, they're going to lay hands on you. They're going to persecute you. They're going to deliver you to the very places where you are to be worshiping in the synagogues and, and the temple. They're going to deliver you to the prisons. You're going to be brought before kings and governors. All of these things on the account of my name. It's going to result that you're going to be his witnesses. That's what my witnesses. That's what Jesus says. <clears throat> Verse 14. But make up your mind not to worry. Make a decision not to worry about it. Now, that's kind of hard to say when the persecution is going hot and heavy at times. And 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 I'll tell you, you know, um, uh, when, when there is more month than there is money and, you know, been there, done that. When there are a number of other things, uh, you know, people are accusing you for for stuff that didn't really happen, you know, and you know they're you know they're they're doing so to point fingers onto you. So their folks, those fingers aren't pointing necessarily onto them. Jesus even says through that decision, understand this: you're going to be betrayed. Verse sixteen by parents, brothers, sisters, uh, sisters, relatives, friends. Continuing on with verse 16. I know this is getting so encouraging, right? Watch with me. They will even put some of you to death. All men will hate you because of me. But verse 18, Jesus comes along and says, not a hair of your head will perish. Now, when you look at what that is saying there, that doesn't necessarily, we won't be pain free. All right, so watch this, okay, because we certainly understand, you know, stuff happens, pain happens, we get that, all right? But when Jesus says, stand firm in verse 19, uh, for you will gain life, he's talking about literally having the endurance to walk through the process because we have an eternal life destiny to be with him. What I want you to focus on this morning simply is this. It's time to make some decisions about how we are going to worship our King and our God. Um, and I'll tell you, life becomes so much easier when some of these decisions have already been made. And, and I'm going to just share something from our family uh, with it. And it was a principle that was taught very early on um, uh, in the church I was raised. Certainly didn't hurt having uh, a mom and a dad that, that taught where God belonged, not only in your worship, but in your finances as well. But when our bills come along, you know, and that kind of a thing that happens, you know, uh, we were certainly taught that's your first fruits, which is your tithes, your 10%. Now, this is not about money. And if you think it is and the church needs, yeah, sure. You know, we'll take your donation and go and use it for the kingdom of God. That's exactly what it's for. But I'm just telling you, you know, um, before anybody on the other end of that camera or anywhere else in this world thinks that I'm just after your cash, no, you know, because I'm very much of the opinion, all right? And, and you need to hear me. If you don't understand what I'm saying, pick up the phone, call me, email me, do something else. But here's a simple fact of the matter. If you think God is so poor that he needs your money to go out and do kingdom, his business work, you're worshiping the wrong God. Because your tithes and offerings is not about a money thing. It's a heart thing. It is you placing God first, not only in your finances, because that's where the tithe things is, but in your worship with that as well period. You know, I always thought when I would see preachers come along and go, if you don't give your tithes, the lights are going to go off. Wow. If I don't serve that God, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. We got to write a check, keep the lights on. I get it. 
But the simple fact of the matter is this, when it came to establishing our family, we kept that principle. Ties comes first, period. And going back, not so much this is a, that this is a, a sermon on finances, as nearly as much, we made a decision a long time ago that said, this is how we deal with it. Now, don't get me wrong. There, there have been those occasions where stuff had come up and, you know, and, uh, you know, different things. And there might have been a ch check wrote one day before we got the tithe thing out. But over time, and that, that, that just, just, that's just called life. <clears throat> but over time, even sitting here and now, before any of the finances get paid, God goes first in those finances. That was a decision we made 20 some odd years ago in the Jackson family. And guess what? It's not even a thought anymore. It's just what we did. It's what we do. There is no, there is no more going back on that decision. Well, you know, if we pay the lights, this and that, and God will hopefully bless and this and that wasn't the case. That's what we do. We made a decision a long time ago. We made a decision that this house will worship the creator of the universe. That was a decision we made a long time ago. And when you come to the place of making those kinds of decisions, and as where I'm going with this, it's time to make some decisions. It's time to make decisions. I'm worshiping my God or I am not. And that's kind of black and white with some different things with it. but. I'm, I'm here to tell you, life goes better when you make decisions putting God first. Now, sometimes, let me tell you, and, and if you, it's not even sometimes, current, let's just go with currently. Smoke, mirrors, stuff, things, science, masks. All this other stuff that comes along. There's too many times you just got to kind of work through the, the stuff to get to figure out what God is saying. And I'll tell you something. There is a way to do that. <clears throat> Go back with me, if you will, to our scripture that we just simply started off with. You know, Jesus said, verse 34, be on your guard. Make a decision to be on your guard so that your hearts won't be weighed down. I'll tell you something else. Not that I'm here to come down on any, any family member of my past or my world or anything along those lines. But, you know, um, there was another decision I made long ago. Alcohol was just not this. Again, I'm not coming down on it. It's just where I'm, alcohol was not going to be part of my world. Period. <clears throat> I had watched and we're just going to leave it as, you know, family and we'll go with some friends, you know, as well, more friends than family. But I just watched some of that go down. I'm like, whatever that is, I don't want it. And therefore, we we chose when the Jackson, that's just not going to be in the house. It's just not part of what we do. And I'm not here to tell you to get rid of it or, or, or whatever you're doing in your own world. I'm just telling you it was one less thing that we had to worry about because we don't have to worry about being drunk. Period. Again, I'm not here to preach against it, but I'll tell you something. If it powers your world, I will tell you you're better off getting rid of it. And if you want a sermon on drunkenness, let's just go with don't. I know that sounds extremely really easy, but I'll tell you, you know, if um, <clears throat> if we need to walk through some more stuff, we certainly will together. But there were, again, we made some decisions. Be on our guard. One of the things we don't deal with in our household is that. Because we chose just to not to bring it in. <clears throat> Be on your guard. So... So that you're not weighted down with, with different things that might distract you. Somebody said to me once, I am just, I just get so depressed watching the news. Shut it off. Quit bringing it into your home. I dealt with a, I dealt with a, a guy one time that he was um, talking about how he was having, having trouble with pornography. Right? And I said to him, I'm like, dude, 
I'm just gonna like be overwhelmingly straight up, but it sounds like you're struggling. I get it. You and your wife having some trouble there. Um, why don't we just start with canceling that, like, you know, magazine subscription thing? <laughs> you know, just just some simple stuff right there, you know? You think that'll help? <laughs> Gotta start somewhere, <laughs> you know? Jesus continues to say, uh, <clears throat> be on your guard so that even the worries of life and that day does not catch it you catch you unexpectedly like a trap because the day is coming when the son of man is returning for his church for it's going to come upon us now i'll tell you i'm not sure where your where your relationship is currently with jesus but i will certainly tell you this i'm at the point now you know what if i don't make it to lunch today cuz our king and our God comes back from his church. I'm okay with that. Really? Because I'm about done with everything else. It just, you know, just absolutely useless. And I'll tell you something. I speak from a, from a position where I am just overwhelmingly insulated from what other persecution is going on with my brothers and sisters on the rest of this planet. And I'm sure they're crying out for it way more than I am. Jesus in verse 36, <clears throat> verse 35 finishes off. Jesus says, for it will come to all who live on the face of the entire earth. Verse 36, and Jesus says, be alert at all times. You want to sit here and, 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 and wonder how to, how to fix some of those things? That doesn't mean don't pay your bills, but it certainly says, you know, it's amazing what happens when you put God first in your thoughts, your finances, and a number of other things that are going on in your world. I will tell you, life starts becoming a little bit easier when it comes time to follow him and make those decisions. I made a challenge. Uh, I think I've done it here too, but I made a challenge at one point to uh, 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 to a, a church that I was on staff at preaching. I said, you want to make a, a change in your world? <clears throat> Take whatever time, and of course, Life was much less cable organized back in those days, you know. And for those of you who were wondering, we really had things called antennas. They said on the TV, it wasn't this thin. The TV was like bigger. You set these rabbit ears things and you moved them around, you know. Sometimes you put foil on them so you can get more, more stuff that would come in. Yeah, those kind. Yeah, those days, Chuck's laughing. He knows what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but I made a challenge that was simply this. If you spent just, if you spent minute for minute in either the word of God or prayer, praying and meditation to God, pick either one or whatever combination that you would spend in front of the one-eyed God, the boob tube, I'll tell you something, you probably will see two things happen. One, your relationship with Jesus improve, and two, probably more stuff happen because I think the enemy is going to be like going, oh, we don't want that to happen. But it's amazing when you take time to put God first. Jesus says, Verse 36, praying so that you may have strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. And I will add that when that time comes. Not only in Judgment Day, but certainly daily when we are literally dying to Him. And I will tell you <clears throat> two verses I want to emphasize today <clears throat> one of them is on the end here in verse 33 jesus uh luke chapter 21 verse 33 it's all it's the last slide bobby at the very end uh with it there before he starts encouraging his disciples to, you know to put him first as he's talking about the different temple things but uh we're going to end not only with this but another verse as well jesus says this heaven earth it's going to pass away. My words will never pass away. That's what my God said. 
it amazes me that that the so few absolutes from so many other people that would have around that would lead into other religions, other sources, other things, other whatevers. But I find the absolutes that my God has. I am the way, the truth, or the life. My words will never pass away. And ending with another verse familiar with a lot of people, <clears throat> but Hebrews 13, 8. That the author there writes, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I was teaching a junior high class and I was talking about that. And somebody went, how boring. And I went, not necessarily. How much can you know you would have something that you will always be able to bank on? Because it doesn't change. It doesn't change that Jesus is still the way, the truth, and life. He was the way, the truth, and life 2,000 and, you know, 21 years ago. He's still the way, the truth, and the life now. <clears throat> Heaven and earth wasn't passing away then. And it certainly isn't going to, you know, without his words being there forever. Because his words will not pass away. They weren't doing it then and they're going to do it, not going to do it now. And so, church, I would encourage you, time to make some decisions. Not so much the black or white side, but start making the decisions on the, on the side that says, Jesus is going to be my God. And I may not, and you, and you may go think, oh, I ain't got this all together. Let me tell you something, neither do I. Somebody said once, I, boy, it looks like you got a plan. No, I'm making this up as I go along. And I'll tell you, there are certain things that I do have a plan about. I get it, following God. But, you know, do I have it all together? No, there are certain things of this. Yeah, we're making it up as we're going along because tomorrow's going to be another day. Today, though, we're working on getting through the day. Jesus Christ, still our King and our God. And we do that daily, regularly. And as we face things, we find that, yeah, is there stuff out there? There is stuff out there. There's people dealing with a number of different things and we pray through it, we pray with it, and we continue to move forward. <clears throat> one, of our, uh, one of our firefighters on the back in our local area here in Southern Boone has on the back of his helmet, always forward. And I'll tell you something, that'll preach right here. Folks, always forward toward the kingdom of God. Always forward toward the kingdom of God. Will we pay the electric bill? Yep, we will. Going forward with the kingdom of God. Are we going to, you know, do Halloween outreach again? You're darn right we are. Want me to tell you the days of the way it is or just go with it? <laughs> Let's just say we got, a, we got a few. But it's always forward with the kingdom of God. And I'll tell you something, that decision is still made and it's right up here because, you know, when we hit about the end of, end of uh, the summertime, we start clicking in, always forward, always moving forward, always moving, making the decision, always moving forward with the kingdom of God, making the decision, Jesus first, always with the kingdom of God. And when we do that in everything that we do, even when stuff comes up, that doesn't mean things aren't going to happen. I know Christians who got cancer. It happens. It's the world we live in, but we're moving forward. I know people who were Christians that were in the Twin Towers. I know people who were Christians that have been killed by COVID. Always moving forward still with the kingdom of God. Let's pray if you will. Father, thank you again for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Lord God, I pray this morning that as we seek your face, putting you first in all the things that we would do, that Lord Jesus, not only will you reveal yourself to us, but certainly in some of our desperate situations that I know many of us are walking through right here and right now, we ask for your presence to be known. And we certainly ask for your direction to be given. Lord, we ask for your healing touch because you told us to do that. 
Lord, we ask for your provision because you told us to, to do those things. Lord, we also ask that we will be able to continue to go forward with building your kingdom because you commanded us to do that too. Lord God, I pray that as we go about your business, whether whether it's uh, whether it's uh, worshiping you, whether it's lifting up your name, whether it's gathering together, whether Lord God, we're we're telling someone or or witnessing to somebody about what what you did in our lives, or or Lord God, whether we're just walking through life, that people would see you, Lord Jesus, more than they would ever see us. And if that's your prayer this morning, I invite you to say amen. And God bless you as you go.